in computer science, as in life, we're often confronted with new things that we don't know anything about, a new function, a new library, a new tool. And there might be documentation, but that documentation might be incomplete or just not make a lot of sense. Um, and even good documentation, we often have questions about, well, how exactly do we use this? Um, what does it look like to work with this thing? So uh, as an example of that, what I've done here is I've redefined a built-in function in the Racket beginning student language, um, given it the name mystery, um, so we don't know what it does from the name. And we're going to explore it and try to figure out what it does by doing kind of empirical experimental work. We're going to try it out and see what kinds of things happen. Um, and we'll take notes uh, up here of what we discover as we go along. So we know the function is called mystery. We don't know anything else. So I think one of the first questions is going to be, how many arguments does it take? And then as a related piece, what kinds of arguments does it take? Integers or strings or Booleans, uh, some combination of those things we don't really know. So let's first just say, well, what if we try calling mystery with no arguments? I'm going to hit run here. I have the top of the um, definitions window above the uh, video screen uh, because the definition is up there and there's not a good way to completely hide that um, because it'll keep trying to highlight it when there are errors. So uh, you'll have to take my word for it. I'm about to hit the run button. So I hit the run button and it says, hey, mystery expects two arguments but found none. Well, that's a pretty useful piece of information. So let's actually record that in our lab notes. I'm going to comment out the call uh, because that call generates an error. And if we leave it uncommented, then every time we run the uh, program, it's going to generate that error. We don't want that. So this tells us that mystery takes two arguments. So that's a pretty useful thing to have figured out. Now, as I said, we don't have any idea what those arguments are. Are they numbers, strings? So let's just call, oops, I want to put it up here um, so we have a record of it. Um, let's say we'll just call mystery 3 five. Throw a pair of numbers at it and see what happens. Run. And hey, it says that it wanted a string for the first argument, but received a three. Okay. So that tells us, so that's an error again, so I want to comment that out. And so this tells us that the first argument needs to be a string, not sting, string, but we still don't know the type of the second argument. Okay, so we know the first argument should be a string, but we don't know anything about the second argument. So let's try calling it with a string as the first argument, say Morris. And we don't know anything about the second argument, but often functions that take one kind of thing in one place will take the same sort of thing in other places. So let's try a string in the other argument. That might be wrong, but you know, it's worth a guess. So we'll hit run again. Do, do, do. And it didn't like that. It said that we expected a natural number for the second argument, but received Minnesota. So it wants a number here, not a string. So my sort of heuristic that uh, we often use the same types for multiple arguments failed me here. Um, so this tells us that the first argument oops, can't spell, is a string, and the second is a natural number. So now, mystery, Morris, I don't know, three. See what that does. Hit run. Hey, we got something. We got the string R back. So that actually did... Um, succeed. And so that tells us something. Um, why don't we try a couple of other calls just to try to illuminate the space a little bit. Let's try 10. 
Oh, okay. Expected an exact integer in the range 0 to 6, i.e. less than the length of the given string for the second argument, but received 10. So the integer needs to be between, oh, I need to comment that out, 0 and 6, or more generally, 0 and the length of the given string. And if you're not familiar with this notation, the square bracket means it includes this end, and the round parenthesis means it doesn't include this end. So this is saying the integer can be 0, but can't actually be 6. It can go up to 5, but not actually be 6. So this is telling us that the legal values are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 for this case. And it says that this, this 6 here comes from the length of the given string. So presumably, if I were to do, um, say, mystery uh, Minnesota 50, we would find that the limit uh, the range is 0 to 9. Um, yeah, okay. So, so that breaks, and we get this error. Let's put a return there so that... So, Morris has six characters, so we can go 0 to 5. And it's 0 to 5. Notice that that is six values, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, so to have six values, we go start at zero, we go up to, but we don't include six. There are nine letters in Minnesota, so we go zero up to, but not including nine. Okay, so that tells us something useful. And actually, you know, since there's only six possibilities here, why don't we actually just do them all? Um, it wouldn't be that big a deal. Um, and let's see what they all give us. So let's do that. And I'm going to copy and paste, paste. So 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 1, 1. change that to 1, 2, oops, ah, 3, 4, and 5. And we'll hit run. And so the R is coming from this guy here. And then these give us M-O-R-R-I-S. And that pretty clearly tells us what is going on here. This is giving us particular characters in the string that we provided. M-O-R-R-I-S, respectively. This strongly suggests that mystery returns the ith character in the given string. And that would be consistent with the fact that the second argument needs to be in the range 0 to the length including zero, not including the length, because we're clearly using zero-based indexing here. So position zero is the M, position one is the O, two is an R, three is also an R, because there's repeated letters, four is I, and five is S. And so that, I think, gives us a pretty good answer as to what's going on. Um, we could, uh, if we wanted to turn um these calls that we've made into check expects um so uh that would be an if we wanted to sort of document this in a more uh repeatable fashion um like here if we rerun this we'd have to come through and check by hand that these match whereas when we converted these to check expects then uh, it would be able to automatically check. So why don't we do that quick and then we'll call this done. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and turn this into a check, expect, um, R, ah, and I'll, go, I'll leave the comment there. Um, ah, check, 
expect. Uh, and I'm going to just be real cheap here and copy and paste that into all of these places. And this was going to give us M and this was, uh, oh, stop it. Oh, and this is R and this is R and this is I and this is S. So we'll run that again, and we should get the seven tests passed. Huzzah! And as one last thing, it might be worth seeing what mystery does if we give it an empty string. And let's say index zero. Um, and in fact, we get the same error because zero isn't in this range. It is greater than or equal to zero, but it is not less than zero. In fact, no, no integers are greater than or equal to zero and less than zero. So there's nothing that we can pass to mystery that will work with an empty string. So this tells us that we just can't call mystery um, with an empty string. Um, so let's document that. Um, so we say because there are no integers in the range 0, 0, i.e. no integers x such that 0 less than or equal to x less than 0, um, we can't call mystery with the empty string as the first argument. Um, now we've also never actually tried calling mystery with a negative value. We would presume it would fail because it won't be between zero and the length of the string, but it's probably good to check that just to make 100% sure. So, yep, didn't like that. So, um, Wah, 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 wah. Put a semicolon in there. Okay. So this confirms that we can't call mystery. Oh, it should, should be a comment here. Uh, with negative values for the second argument. So I think we've pretty much handled all the extremes here. Um, as far as strings go, we've gotten we've done empty string and non-empty string. As far as the numbers go, we've done negative numbers, we've done zero, and we've done positive numbers. So I think we've handled all the major kind of categories of values. And so I think we know pretty much everything there is to know about mystery. Um, and in fact, it turns out that um, mystery is in fact a re-implementation of the beginning student function um, string ith. Um, and so we can see that string ith morris, let's say one, and we get the string o. So string ith is really what mystery is. Um, and so we figured that out. Yay us. So hope that helped. Thanks a lot. And let me know if you've got any questions.